Hey, thanks for coming to 1500ESPN.com. I'm Derek Wetmore, and I'm going to share with you a couple quick thoughts on the Twins deciding to call up top prospect Byron Buxton for Sunday's game. Uh, the Twins had a little bit of roster shuffling going on with Torrey Hunter deciding to serve his two-game suspension and Aaron Hicks um, complaining about a sore elbow on Saturday before the game. That left the Twins on Saturday with a one-man bench. They were already a little short. They were playing with a three-man bench recently because they're carrying eight relievers in their bullpen, 13 pitchers on the staff. Uh, that only leaves room for three guys on the bench, and with Hunter and Hicks going down, that left only Kurt Suzuki available. And the Twins decided, no, enough's enough. We've got to do something. And they decided to call up their phenom in center field, uh, call him all the way up from A, where he was hitting well with the Chattanooga Lookouts. I wrote a column Friday on Buxton. Uh, you can check that out at 1500ESPN.com, talking about all the different considerations that go into his call. I'll get into some of that stuff here. Uh, the first thing, I think, is that even if his bat isn't fully ready, Byron Buxton absolutely is ready to help the Twins in some form or fashion. Um, his bat, while expected to be good in the majors, uh, might not be his best tool right now. I think you'd have to look at his glove and his speed as the two things that Buxton can bring, even as a 21-year-old, in the majors. I'd be surprised if, come Sunday, he's not starting in center field for the Twins. Um, although, listening to Paul Molitor's post-game comments to the media um, on the FSN broadcast after the game Saturday, it sounds like it's possible this is a short-term move. The Twins are just covering themselves in the event that Hicks maybe has to hit the disabled list or something. Uh, that will be another thing to look at. What is the corresponding move? The Twins on Saturday announced that Buxton would be called up. They didn't announce what the other move would be to make room on the active roster. Um, I'd speculate, and maybe some of you watching this game know what, or watching this video, already know what the move is because you're watching it on Sunday and it's happened. But here I'm guessing Saturday late evening that... The Twins are either going to put Hicks on the disabled list or they'll decide to finally go to a seven-man bullpen and stop carrying eight relievers on the team. I don't know, but the Twins will have to make a roster move to make room for their top prospect. Uh, some of the other things to consider is where he'll bat in the lineup. I don't know, and I think eventually he has a future as either a leadoff hitter or, frankly, he could be a middle-of-the-order hitter if he develops the way some prospect gurus and some people with the Twins think that he will develop and become kind of that perennial all-star. I think he's a ways away from that. Keep in mind, temper expectations. He's just 21 years old. He had a, about a 2-to-1 strikeout-to-walk ratio in AA. He was hitting you know, 283 at the time of his call-up. And uh, on-base percentage, roughly 350. You'll take that kind of production from a guy who's probably going to play some great defense in the outfield. And because of Buxton's speed, he was also able to buoy his slugging percentage. He was slugging 489 at the time of his call-up. I should say his first call-up. Like I said, it remains to be seen if he'll stick in the big leagues, but certainly an exciting day for the Twins organization and for their fans uh, people have been waiting since draft day 2012 to, to try and peg when Byron Buxton would finally be in the major leagues. This is quite a bit earlier than I expected him. If I would have come into the year, I would have guessed Buxton would be a September call-up. I thought we were going to see Miguel Sano before we saw Buxton, but the way Buxton is hitting really well for Chattanooga in that Southern League, um, not altogether surprising to see him get the call, especially considering the Twins' roster situation. A couple other points to get to. I'm curious to see how the Twins outfield continues to play out when guys like Oswaldo Arcia are healthy. The way Eddie Rosario is playing and the way the Twins have played outfield defense lately, I guess I'd be surprised to see them make a shift back to going to a middle-of-the-order slugger who can't really play in the outfield very well. Um, there's some exciting prospects for the Twins right now, considering they could run an outfield out there. If Hicks is healthy, they could have Rosario in left, Buxton in center, Aaron Hicks in right field. Maybe you move Torrey Hunter to DH for the time being. Wow, that would be a ton of outfield range, and I think the Twins would have to feel good with a fly ball pitcher on the mound that not a lot of balls would find the gaps in the outfield with some of that speed up there. So I'm really curious to see how they use Buxton how long he stays, and how his tools play as he sort of adjusts to Major League pitching. I think it will be a big adjustment for Buxton. I've talked to 
dozens of hitters who just say that the difference between double-A pitching and major league pitching is hard to describe. But I do think that his strong minor league track record obviously portends well for his future as a big leaguer. Whether that future starts right away at age 21 is anyone's guess. But generally, you see the players who put up great minor league numbers eventually grow into their own in the majors and put up great major league numbers too. Uh, We'll see Buxton on Sunday. I would be surprised if he's not in the starting lineup. He'll be wearing number 25 for his Twins debut, uh, and and we'll monitor that progress. Certainly the biggest story out of Saturday, despite the Twins getting shellacked a little bit. 11-7 to the Texas Rangers. They made it interesting in the ninth with four ninth inning runs. Uh, If you're interested in the game, please do check out my Five Thoughts column on 1500ESPN.com. I've posted it there. All game coverage, no Buxton. If you care mostly about Buxton, I've also got a column up on that. So check that out, 1500ESPN.com. Finally, Phil Mackey and I will be recording a Touch Em All podcast on Sunday evening, as we do every Sunday evening during the Twins season. Subscribe to that on iTunes, and you'll get plenty of, oh, I would guess there will be some Byron Buxton conversation this week. Uh, Go to iTunes, under podcasts, search Touch Em All, and just subscribe to that podcast so we can send it to you every single week. No hassle, easy to listen to, download it to your smartphone, iPhone, whatever. Um, I get it straight to my computer. It's easier for me that way, although I do listen to a lot of podcasts on my phone. Subscribe to us any way you can if you're interested in the Buxton conversation. There will be plenty on Sunday evening. That'll do it for this video, though. Thank you for coming to 1500ESPN.com. Until next time, I'm Derek Wetmore. I'll catch you later.